Mark, from your LinkedIn profile, I could say that you were involved in uh, streaming technologies long before they were mainstream. So my question is, what was your motivation to choose this specific area many years ago? Yeah, so, um, you know, in early 2000s, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, 2001, two or so, you know, RFID became this, like, you know, one of those hot tech topics, right? So radio frequency identification tags. The, probably the thing that thrust it into the mainstream most was Walmart declaring that they wouldn't take shipments unless they were tagged with these, you know, little tiny radio tags. And um, the debate was, oh my gosh, you can never put one. You can never put one on a, a can of soup because the tags themselves cost five cents and that's the margin on the can of soup. And of course, look at now, like you don't get any delivery without uh, a scan or a tag or some, some form of um, connected IoT sensor. So, so it was really sparked my interest there. And then, of course, when I joined Streambase, um, so there, there was a bunch of uh, academic research there at the time. Cambridge University in the UK, um, John Bates was leading that side. You know, Dr. Stonebreaker at MIT, which um, and his students like Richard Tibbetts and Eddie Galvez. So these guys are all doing this really cool thinking in the early 2000s and then spawn companies. Um, Streambase was part funded as well by, by the national security agencies here in the United States because they saw this whole world change. Data used to always be at rest and in the future it was going to be moving, right? That's the whole, that's the whole idea around streaming technologies is, um, is the shift in computing that you have to go through when data is, you know, in motion. It's actually quite fundamental and that's what got me most excited about it. So yeah, from there it's just exploded. I mean, look, IoT, <laughs> everything's connected. Our people, our, our kids are connected. We're all connected. Um, our things are connected, our refrigerators are connected. So it's really kind of a computing playground. Um, and of course, you know, now it's open source, uh, cloud, and maybe we're gonna talk about some of the technology shifts, but yeah, it's, it's really, it's almost the entire industry is connected now, so. So streaming technology is a hot topic right now, right? It's a trending one. Yeah, it's amazing too, because at the same time, it's very old, right? I mean, RFID, I think if you trace it back, it was first in planes and wars, you know, back in the 40s and 50s, like tags that are probably the size of a refrigerator at the time. But um, but yeah, with miniaturization, with shift to cloud 5G, you know, these things are just making it much easier to, to compute with things that are connected. In one of the videos, um on YouTube, I could see that you are speaking about Kafka as a de facto standard for enterprise messaging. Uh, my question is, what is Tipco's approach to open source software? Do you support projects like Kafka? And if so, does it help you accelerate the pace of building innovative projects? Yeah, no, it's a good one. And I've got to say, I think that video that you're referring to is probably the one that I made. It's probably, it's not really sort of the official corporate position because of course we're, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a really fascinating question, of course, because TIPCO, TIPCO was founded. TIB stands for the, 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 the Technicron Information Bus. <laughs> the, the, that, the bus that was that digitized Wall Street back in, my gosh, starting in the 1990s and going through the 2000s and even in today, right? So it's really interesting. So I, yeah, I, I did say de facto for Kafka because open source is really, it's a tsunami, right? Everybody reaches for open source first and that's great. And we of course support that. We distribute, contribute mm -hmm. to, to Kafka. We're one of the leading providers of, of, of Kafka itself uh, in the industry. Um, but also it's it's interesting because it's not, it's, it's, there's a wide range like messaging in real time systems it's a massive area, you know, I like, you know, the old saying here at TIPCO is if, if our messaging doesn't work, then planes don't fly, transactions don't happen on Wall Street and FedEx doesn't deliver packages. I mean, when you get up into that kind of mission critical messaging, you know, there's no substitute for some of the advanced things that, that TIPCO does. So we have now this whole range all the way from open source to sort of mission critical messaging. Um, and then also with the rise of IoT, there's other um, dimensions that are important too, like MQTT, different variants of messaging that are specifically designed for like edge computing and IoT data streams. And, um, so, so yeah, there's a gigantic field and uh, we, we, we love Kafka. And one of our big areas of concentration is to make Kafka better, right? Like we think that I mean, Kafka is great plumbing, right? But at the same time, you don't want your plumber designing your kitchen, right? So 
you so so we we think it's um you know so the plumbing's essential and cloud infrastructure and then on top of that you have to put analytics visualization tools that make it easier to deal with um with that streaming data so so it's both uh we support it we love it we contribute and then we also extend it and try to make it better and democratize kafka um in a way that makes it accessible to everyone